Now, Queensland Premier Stephen Miles has been given a reality check by voters. Two by-elections over the weekend, the LNP claiming Labor's heartland seat of Ipswich West, while in the former Premier Palaszczuk's seat of Inala, the party has suffered a 29% swing away from the government on primary votes. Here's Miles earlier today. He's got that silly smile wiped from his face. Holding on to particularly Ipswich West was always going to be very hard. I said that. Um, this result... These results are clearly very bad. Uh, I was expecting a bad result, and they're even worse than that. Clearly, they wanted to send us a message that we need to work harder, particularly on cost of living and on community safety. I think it was yesterday rather than this morning, but I tell you what, how he needs these by-election results to convince him about cost of living and crime is beyond me. Queensland's Deputy Opposition Leader, Jared Blade, joined me to share his assessment of what went on. Well, thanks, Chris, and thanks for having me on your program again. Look, we asked the people of Ipswich West and Nala to send the Labor government a message, and, boy, they sent a strong message on the weekend. But we also upheld the vote in the Brisbane City Council elections as well. So it just shows that it is a bad Labor government in Queensland, and it's not going to get better until October election and the people change the government. Well, of course, these results are very encouraging for the October election, of course. It looks like there'll be a change of government. Your leader, David Christofulli, has got you really primed for that election. How do you now keep a lid on all that and make sure people keep doing all the work they need to do? Well, the by-elections on the weekend were positive and we've won Ipswich West and we'll have a great Member of Parliament in Darren's, I know, in Ipswich West. Uh, Anala, our candidate, Trang Yen, uh, performed very well, a great community champion. Uh, but, of course, those results may not reflect what's going to happen in October. We have to work harder and harder every day, keep talking about the right priorities for Queensland's future. We've been listening to Queenslanders on housing, health, the cost of living and the youth crime crisis. They're the issues that Queenslanders are talking about. They're the issues we're talking about. And unfortunately, the Labor Party are just tone deaf on all these issues. They don't get it. They're arrogant. They've been in power for nine years. And listening to the Premier yesterday and the Deputy Premier, Cameron Dick, on the night of the Anala by-election, they're just spewing the same talking points they've been spewing for three years now, nearly nine years, and Queenslanders are not listening anymore. Yeah, but Stephen Miles, the Premier, says he's heard the message, says that uh, the message is that he needs to do more on cost of living pressures and on crime and law and order. Do you worry that this could be the wake-up that he needs as Premier? Well, the problem is the more Stephen Miles does on housing and, and cost of living and health is, is worse for Queensland is because he was the minister responsible for the crisis we have in Queensland at the moment. He was the infrastructure minister. He was the planning minister. He was the health minister. So we have a health crisis because of Stephen Miles. We have a youth crime crisis because Stephen Miles watered down the youth justice laws in 2015 and 16 with Anastasia Palaszczuk. Uh, we have the cost of living crisis, the housing crisis. He was the planning minister that 30% reduction in lots, housing lots being released to Queenslanders to build a house and have a roof over their head. So unfortunately, the more Stephen Miles says he's going to be engaged and actively engaged in these issues, the worse it will be for Queensland because he has been the responsible minister for all these disasters in Queensland. And that's why the people at Ipswich West and Inala sent a very strong message on the weekend that they're not happy and they're hurting. Chris, they... We have tent cities all across Queensland. We have tent cities in the Premier's own electorate. And for a Premier that's been in power of a government now for nine years, for him to say six months before an election, I'm going to start listening to Queenslanders, I think Queenslanders are taking that with a grain of salt because what's he been doing for the last nine years? Yeah, well, let's look to the future a bit. And uh, I'm very keen to get your position on nuclear energy. You know, of course, that Peter Dutton's running strongly on promoting a domestic nuclear power industry. Is that something that an LNP Queensland government would support? Well, our priority on energy is making sure that energy is affordable and reliable at the moment. And that our priority is getting Calide Power Station back online. It's been over a 1,000 days. The coal-fired power station hasn't been back online. If we did that, the Auditor-General says it'll reduce power prices. 
Queenslanders want action now on power prices. Um, in, in terms of nuclear, we've consistently said until both major political parties at a federal level agree on a way forward, then we don't see it progressing in Queensland. Our priority has to be at the moment the cost of living pressures, and that is the immediate cost of living pressures, getting the coal-fired power station back online at Calide C and making sure those savings are put into Queenslanders' pockets on their power bills at the moment. That's our priority because that's what Queenslanders are telling us. So even if the Queensland Federal LNP leader Peter Dutton were to become Prime Minister and implement a domestic nuclear power industry, if you were in government, you wouldn't be supporting it until you got bipartisan support. Well, our priority has to be what Queenslanders are talking to us at the moment about, Chris, and that's the coal-fired power stations and getting affordable and reliable power back on track at the moment. That's the thing we can do now. That debate is many, many years off, and uh, we are facing an election in October, and we have to show Queenslanders what our plan is, and our plan is having affordable and reliable energy that goes back into the pockets of Queenslanders. Otherwise, we're going to have blackouts and brownouts with electricity. Electricity prices have increased over 19 per cent in the last two years alone. That has to be our focus and our priority at the moment. But that debate is in the here and now. It's a big part of Peter Dutton's federal potential election campaign, prospective election campaign. He can't deliver nuclear energy in this country unless he gets state governments on board. And you're saying even an LMP Queensland state government wouldn't support it. Well, there's a lot of water to go under that bridge before that is the case, and, and I suspect we'll be at an at election before our federal counterparts. And that, I'm just saying, Chris, that's... Honestly, what Queenslanders are talking to us about at the moment, and, uh, and that was reflected on the weekend. I stood at the booths in Ipswich West and Inala, and uh, every second person was talking about the cost of living crisis in Queensland now. People are hurting. They need to see their electricity bills reduce now, uh, and that has to be our priority. That's just our focus at the moment because it's Queensland's focus. All right, Jared Blade, just one other issue I want you to clear up for us. There's the report today on the Brisbane Olympics, the Queensland Olympics for 2032, suggesting that the Gabba rebuild should be abandoned in favour of a brand new stadium to be built at Victoria Park, just north of the CBD. Is that program the one that the LNP would support? Well, we've been pretty consistent on the Olympic and Paralympic Games waste that the uh, Miles government has overseen and the Palaszczuk government oversaw with Miles as the responsible minister. We never supported the Gabba knockdown because we saw it go from a billion dollars to $2.7 billion. And then today we find out through media that the Gabba knockdown was actually going to be $3.4 billion. How long has Stephen Miles known that his own baby pet baby project had blown out to $3.4 billion? We don't support these projects and stadiums unless there's business cases that back it up. That wasn't the case with the Gabba and that's not what I've seen the case for new stadiums that are being announced by the government today. Yeah, a long way to go on that one too. Thanks so much for joining us, Jared Blay. Thanks, Chris. Cheers.